When I first talked about this Hallett Sky, I said it's it's good, you know, it prints really cool things. But the slicer is eh, and Windows only. So, you know, tried a couple things and it worked. But then as I'm going through my comments in my YouTube, Creality responded and said, hey, new version's coming soon. Expect a Mac one by the end of the month. Well, apparently the sixth is the end of the month. Greetings, Dave here, DCBFX. Another video on the Creality Hallett Sky. Um, welcome Creality to the channel. Thanks you uh, for reaching out. They reached out to me and they said, hey, you know, we like your videos. And hey, new slicers are coming. What I had last week when I did a teeny tiny little Ant-Man discs, well, disc, fell, drop one. Um, struggle through with the Alpha on my Surface Pro. Now Surface Pro is a great tablet slash computer, not a great computer, but as a tablet, it's pretty good. Running a Windows software on it is, eh, and it was an alpha, it was pretty terrible. But they said, we expect Mac version to be as soon, expect a, uh, expect a uh, beta version, uh, the Windows version as well. Well, Mac guy, so of course I'm gonna run out. If it's gonna be a Mac version, I'm gonna use it. Well, I gotta work on now. Let me give you a quick rundown of the Mac version of the slicer. So looking here, that's the, the front of the slicer. That's much like it is in the Windows side. Uh, I've imported my Star-Lord model, which incidentally is printing right now. I've scaled it down from the one I did on the Viper, but it's still printing. I didn't want to do a 16 hour print. I figured it's, you know, six hours better. So what you do here, so now looking at that is uh, the software. So here it is with the slicing software. There's not a lot you can do there. It's basically, it's, Here's how the workflow works. You auto-generate supports, and it looks like this. What you can do, which is very problematic in the alpha version on the PC side, which is much better than this now, is you can edit the supports. So if you're looking at the picture here, all those green dots are where supports go. So you can add to them gently, but, I don't know. The problem I'm having is uh, with auto supports, it's okay, but Here's a bigger disc I did, and um, it's warped. Um, I tried auto and it just didn't work well. I'm gonna, I did them 90 degrees, I'm trying them at 45 degrees, see how that works. But it's a little bit warped, a little bit off. It's not bad, but you know, the auto supports are not very good. Now, I just started playing around with the modifying the supports, but yeah. Other than that, the software, it does have a hole, they call it drill, and there also is a hollow, so you can hollow it out and that's what you use the drill for. You obviously would hollow out the model and then you'd add a hole for the resin to drain out. Uh, I'm just printing this solid because why not? It's going to be about yay big. It's not going to be huge, so it's not really a huge waste. And well, it's not my resin. It's me to, uh, to try out this, this printer. All in all, this is a version two. So, you know, where I believe on the Mac side, it doesn't say more it's beta or not. It just says it's, you know, version two. It works well enough. I would love to see some updates to it so they could do a few other things that. Chitu box or lychee or you know any other slicers out there like you know the uh the any cubic the ones they have for the mono you know this program is actually called the halot box and as i showed you in the slicing you can't do a lot so basically they've calibrated this for this this printer doing some reading on it it says you can do you know three seconds per layer this is doing seven and a half and there's no way to change it that I can see in the software, it's very minimal. In like, it doesn't even look like a Mac app. In in a lot of cases, the menu structure there's nothing there. It's really really minimal. But you know, I'm sure they're working on it. And considering that you know, historically Mac software has always been a little behind the PC stuff, is what it is. But it's a great start. I wouldn't mind being able to you know ramp up or ramp down the cure times. I've got some uh, resin coming. Creality's sending me some resin soon. To, uh, to give it a try, and I would love to be able to change those settings, but at this point, all I can see in the highlight box is, here's our stock settings. I don't even know what it is on the base layer. I haven't sat to time it, because it only has a couple of base layers, but I did time it, it's about seven and a half, eight seconds per layer. So consider this a cool follow-up on this. One thing I am noticing too, uh, just as a total side, um, the timing is way off. When I did the Ant-Man discs, 
I, actually, I have this. Last layer, done, 48 minutes to go. It's always off. Even then, uh, it was funny, when I sliced Star-Lord in the slicer, it said seven and a half hours. I put it on here, it said six and a half hours. And I'm willing to bet it'll be done in five and a half hours. So I do that with lychee and the other ones as well. I take them with a grain of salt. I don't always believe what they tell me. But I think now that I've got the slicer working, this, this is nice. The only problem I have now is I have to upgrade some of my equipment because I have like big tubs that I would, you know, put lots of things in. I use a smaller tub, so I don't want to waste alcohol, but I have a smaller tub and this doesn't fit. I can't clean off the, uh, the base plate. So I need to invest in some bigger tubs and I gotta be able to seal them because, well, if you leave it out, alcohol will evaporate quickly. Okay, here we go. Final layer. Now what does it say on the front panel? An hour 43 left to go. So start order is done. We'll just turn that off here. It's done. Looks beautiful. I'll show you in a sec. But uh, yeah, some in the firmware, which I'm sure, you know, this is still a pre release unit. I'm sure they're going to fix it. But an hour 43 left. Now, the thing is, it said it was going to be six and a half hours. I started it just after nine. Six and a half hours, according to my time, because I have 3.35. So, something here is just not reading it right. Let's see how Star Lord looks. That looks pretty darn good. The only thing I don't like about this printer right now, which maybe they'll fix when they get it ready to go out, is with my Mono and the Mono SE I tested out, I could turn it sideways on here and let it drip out. This has got a little catch here. Can't turn it sideways, so you basically have to let it drip on its own. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it into some ice propyl and then clean it off and then I'm going to deal with this tomorrow because I have a meeting to deal with tonight. Of course this is now tomorrow anyway, uh, but tomorrow my time. So that is the same Star Lord I printed and that is pretty much automatic supports. For some reason when it does auto supports too it takes the whole thing off the bottom of the bed. So for something like this, I would have printed it flat on the bed because I don't care about the bottom with the clouds or whatever it is, but it is what it is. So that's a follow-up on my previous video on the slicer. It's a good step. A little more work to go, but looking good. So that's it for now, and I uh, hope everyone's having a great day, and we'll talk to you all later.